small loans, perhaps just $25, can be enough to start a small sewing business or a bakery. The basic thinking is that it generally works in the sense of, of lifting people out of poverty. Probably the biggest drawback is that it's very hard to scale up on a level that will, it's not going to eliminate poverty. It's not the only thing that needs to be done. Robert Engelman with World Watch Institute says that microfinance repayment rates have exceeded the average. We were seeing bigger repayment rates working with small groups of women and small amounts of money than we saw in government-to-government -government loans and World Bank loans and certainly loans made to individual men. Today, there are thousands of micro lenders around the world with tens of millions of customers. India and Africa are considered the fastest growing markets and the business model is growing. Grameen Bank founder Muhammad Yunus says the more lenders, the better. We are inviting them to join in and compete in the market so that the market becomes stronger and more competitive so the prices go down, interest rate goes down. There are risks and yet without the commercial money, without commercial financial institutions, it's never going to really grow as big as it has the potential to be. Finca is a charitable microfinance organization targeting people making less than two dollars a day. Spokeswoman Sona Gandhi says microlending is on the rise. So we see it as a very positive advancement that uh, it's not just Finca anymore. Microcredit can come with very high interest rates from 10 to 50 percent or more. Rates like that might seem predatory, but credit cards frequently charge more than 20 percent. But 50 percent? Gandhi says for their part, Finca works very hard to get to the people with loans that average about $500. We go the extra mile. We'll climb the mountain, we'll cross the lake, um, we'll get on the bus and we'll go to the hinterlands to be able to serve our clients. As our goal is not uh, to reach the easiest client. It's not to reach the person who is right down the street or, or right off of the bus line. It's, it's to ensure that we can serve the individuals who need our help the most. Gandhi says Finca's business model is designed to be self-sustaining so the organization can continue to grow and help more people. In the Bedouin city of Rahat, Israel, um, Abed used a micro loan to buy sheep to sell and to produce dairy products. She says, I took the first loan, bought a few sheep, then I took the second one. I bought more sheep, and the situation now is good, thanks to God. But as popular as microfinance is, David Rudman with the Center for Global Development worries about the rapid growth rate and how borrowers use one loan to pay off another until they fall too far behind. The growth has been extraordinarily rapid in India, you know, doubling every you know, few months, it seems almost. There's been a real backlash in India just in the last couple months since the first Indian microcreditor went public in an IPO and made several people quite rich. As a result, Rudman says one of India's largest states tried to pass a law forcing all microcreditors to seize operations until they register with the government. It's clear that there's a huge political fight brewing now over microcredit, and it's possible that the whole thing could, could be brought down. Imagine a world without credit, a world in which you carry just cash. Rudman reminds us that the poor are no different and that they need the same access to borrowed money to improve their lives and craft their future. I'm Philip Alexio, BOA News.